Good morning, everybody. It's Grant Finley Sheriff's co founder and CEO of Park Bench. Excited to be with you on this beautiful holiday season, Monday, December 17th, 2018. Hope everyone is doing well. We're going to get started in a couple minutes while people are rolling in. So if you are here, Please say hello in the chat box. Let everyone know who you are and where you do business. And some ideas for what you're doing this Christmas break for your business. And what's good. Tell, tell the group what's good in life and business. Okay, so share with everyone in the group who you are, where you do business, And let's talk about what's good and what's happening in each other's businesses. Good morning, Susan. Okay, really excited about today. We're talking about the future of Park Bench. So I'm excited to have some people join that are very new to the Park Bench family, but also some people who have been with us for months or years so we can talk about the future of the company, the future that we have in store for you, the agents, and what we have in store for the business owners and the homeowners and the platform as a whole, and some of my big crazy ideas that I see for the future to really help you all out and help the community out. And then what I'm excited about today is to actually get your ideas, your feedback, your advice, so like always, get your hands ready, get your minds ready, go to the bathroom if you need to, get a drink, and we're going to get started in a couple minutes. Look at this crowd rolling in. Good morning, everybody. Christina, Donna, Lisa, Pat, Patty, Renee, happy holidays. Look at the areas. Linda from New Jersey, Chris from Texas, South Carolina, we got represented here. Ontario, good morning, Candice. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning, Gwen. Okay, so everyone say hello in the chat box. Let everyone know who you are, where you do business, and let's start off with some with some wins. Tell everyone what's good in life and business. Share something good. Share something positive. Share a win that's happening with your business and or with Park Bench. And I want you guys to start thinking about, we're going to be talking about technology today and what our plans are for you all. And when it comes to marketing services and support for you and for your business, what I would like to be doing for you in the future. We're going to talk about what we can both do for the business owners, the homeowners. Um, So start getting the creative juices flowing. Uh, because today is going to be really fun, really insightful, and I hope really exciting and really motivating for this journey that you are all on to being a local leader, to being a part of Park Bench, and being a part of, I think, the future of real estate, the future of community building. Good morning, Carrie. Good morning, Julie, Michelle. Look at this crowd. It's amazing. Every week, this group gets bigger. Really excited. I appreciate all your guys' time. Can everyone give me a quick audio, video, sound check? I'm using a headset today. Let's turn on my webcam. I'm using a headset today and in hopes that it is more clear. So if everyone can give me some feedback on the audio being really clear, um, that would be great because now that we're in this new office, I found that this room that I'm in is a little echoey. So video is good. Sound is good. Awesome. Debbie and John, what's going on? Hello, hello, everyone. I apologize if I missed your name. So many great names, so many great realtors, so many great messages. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, let's get started. Today we are talking about the future of Park Bench, the future of what we can do for you. And so I have some goals on the screen um, that I want you guys to read. And I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in, okay, to help you all see this. Oh, perfect. Okay. So 
first and foremost, I want to get your guys' ideas. All right, guys and gals in the room, I'm going to get your ideas. I want to get your advice for the future of Park Bench. And what I'm excited for is that when I ask you these questions that I've planned out, for you to read what others have to say and for you to read what other agents are believing are the best practices for their business, because we'll be talking about best practices that we would want to incorporate into the future of the company. And we'll be talk and I want you to read the thoughts that that your peers think about how to succeed in the future and what we as a company need um, to be in the future. Okay. Now of course I've got some thoughts about the future. And I hope that at the end of this, you're all really motivated and excited about one, building your park bench micro site. Two, for the vision that you have for your business and for the future of you being a part of this family and you being a part of this network, both financially and from a quantitative point of view, but also from a qualitative, from a spiritual point of view, just knowing that, hey, we're going to be doing so much good for our community, and that fills me up inside, and I know that's going to fill me up in my business. All right. I just saw something really cool. Patty is asked to co-host a local radio show uh, because of her park bench interviews. That is su super awesome. Who has had some really cool, weird experiences because of park bench that, that you didn't even expect? That, that may not even have anything to do with you know getting buyers and getting sellers. Who has some cool stories to share that because of what they're doing for the community? You know, I've had people get off, offered CEO jobs. We've had people sell cows because uh, their parents own a farming business. We've had people um, get invited to really cool parties um, because of this. So everyone share some cool wins um, that maybe have happened because of your journey with Park Bench. Okay, so these are my goals for today. Okay, now let's talk about uh, first and foremost, our future and our vision for you all, for our park bench agents, because there's a technology side, there's a marketing side, and there's an operations and a training component. These are the four areas that I think about when trying to enhance our, tech, our service and our product to you in these four areas. Okay, big picture, I want to be the back end for your entire business. I want you to be uh, like you only have one vendor that you work with. It's Park Bench, and we do everything that you need. Okay, that is my ultimate goal for the next, you know, three, five, okay, ten years. Now, the questions I want to ask you when it comes to technology, the first thing that I want to start building more and more, which is already happening through these masterminds, is our referral network. Okay, I want to get this going even more. So the questions I have for you all, so please answer these, is what will make it easier for you to give referrals and get referrals? When you think about other solutions, other ideas, other platforms that you maybe have been a part of, I know there's companies out there that have focused on referrals, what will make it easier for you to give referrals and what will make it easier for you to get referrals? When you think about how Park Bench can do that for you, what comes to mind? And here's another question that you can answer is what information do you want to know about Park Bench agents? Okay? What information do you want to know about Park Bench agents? Put that in the chat box. Okay? So answer those two questions because here's what I see. Okay? And Martha had a really good point, a directory of agents with bio info. What would be in that bio? Okay, the way I see it is I want to have a big giant map, okay, where you can see all of you all, all of the park bench agents on a map, okay, and then you can also see everyone in a list view, which is a database, okay, and then in that database, there's going to be some information about people, which can be to do with certifications, okay, designations, it can be the brokerage. Okay, what's the information that you would love to see? Okay, and I want people to be able to post opportunities to the group, and I want people to be able to post their superpowers, and that's kind of goes in the bio. Okay, and everyone should have superpowers, whether it be a relocation specialist, a buyer specialist, a seller, a luxury, a lakefront homes, uh, seniors, millennials, 
Um, whatever your superpowers are or your team's superpowers are that you think if you let the network know, that's going to make them go, oh, thank, thank goodness that you have that superpower because I know someone needs that. And so I can now create an opportunity for us both. Okay. So put in the chat box, because once again, I'm going to be doing a summary of all these notes. You guys will get a recording of the replays. Okay. Who here is enjoying the notes? If, you, if anyone has any uh, feedback or advice on how I can improve my notes and the follow-up post these masterminds, please put that in the chat box. Um, but if you love it, say, I love these mastermind notes that you send after, and I'll just keep doing it the way I'm doing it. Okay. So a referral network is one of the technologies that I want to build in your control panel so that you can see See everyone in the network. You can see a map. You can see the database. You can see the information you need to see about people, um, and then you can post opportunities to the group. Okay, um, you know we're about a thousand strong, and in the next year I want to get to over two thousand. Took us five years to get to a thousand. I want to get to two thousand in two years. All right, in the next year. All right. Next is business planning and activity tracking and reporting. So this is the fundamentals of business. Okay, you've got to create a plan. And for all of you who have attended the masterminds in the past, where we talk about how to create a business plan, right now that is in PDF and Word doc and Excel format. And I want to put that stuff online. Okay, so all the business planning and then the tracking and the report every day, I make it easy for you as a business owner to do your tracking and do your report and have that integrate and sync with your business plan so that it's automatically updating because that's one of the things we talked about in business planning is that as you do more deals, as you do more buyers and do more sellers, you need to record that activity. You need to record those transactions and then that data needs to feed back into your business plan so your business plan can be adjusted so that when you talk about your goals, whatever new activities you need to do, whatever acti activities you need to do more of or less of, or differently, our system will be able to give you that feedback. Okay, and so my question is, and I'll talk a little bit more about what I see for this, do you have a favorite tool for tracking activity and results? Do you have a favorite tool? Um, and, and, and do you have a tool that you use for reporting? Okay, have you thought of a, a report want to be able to easily create for your business because you need okay um in getting these reports done but you you get busy okay like th this is usually the problem as business owners have had i know i've had this all the time is i know the reports i want to create but um i, I i'm not able to get those reports done and that's because of time you know, it's because of the system that I have is not that easy. Ooh, my, my sound's getting wonky. Ooh, it's this internet. Let me just check what. Okay, I'm going to do a quick speed test. Okay. Hit reconnect and hopefully it fixes the sound. Okay, for any of you guys having sound problems, hopefully hit reconnect. Okay, and that should improve the sound. Okay, but let me know what kind of tools you use for tracking and reporting. Because I want to build something in your control panel that allows you to build your business plan. And that allows you to track your progress daily. So it can show you your personal best. So you can push yourself to achieve new personal bests and so that data circles back into your plan so your plan gets updated so that you will know what you need to start doing, what you need to stop doing, what you need to keep doing and maybe do more of, and then also how much you need to be doing of something. That could be phone calls, emails, uh, lead generation, print, interviews, all the things that you do for your business, 
you can plug it in and I know how to build a system that will automatically update so that it keeps reminding you of what you need to do to hit your goals. This is what I see for the future of our technology because that's all business is. It's make a plan and work a plan. Okay, so if you currently use a tool for business planning or a, a, if you currently use a software for tracking your activity and your progress and doing reporting, please put that in the chat box to let other people know. Okay, because this might be, you know, six months, a year, two years away. And so in the meantime, what are some things that people can be using? Exact contact. Uh, I love. Um, I know the owners and they're great. They're a great company. Okay, and I know some of you guys are using it, which is awesome. And if you want to use it, I have a 60-day. Okay, I'll share this after. Um, we, the, the owner, because we went to the same university, gave me a 60-day free trial. No credit cards, no payment, no nothing. All right. Next is a CRM. Okay, so um, really big... So, so question that Pat asks about all these future developments, okay? Will this stuff be ready for the new year? No, absolutely not. This is stuff that we want to build and I want to get your feedback on so that when we start building this stuff in 2019 and in 2020, we build it, we build it right, and we build it in the right order based on the priority that you all need. I know, boo, it sucks. I wish all this could be done instantly. Unfortunately, you know, that's just not how technology works. It takes time to build and to test and to do all this stuff. Um, but uh, we're going to be doing lots of, uh, I'll talk about at the end what we're doing to make sure that this happens faster. Uh, faster. All right, next is CRM. So in the chat box, everyone, please write, what CRMs do you love? Okay. What fun and what functionality do you feel you need on a CRM? Okay. Um, one of the issues that I have found with CRMs is that they're too feature rich. The, the, like we currently use Salesforce, and I know we use 10% of the platform and we overpay for it. And so I'm even looking to switch next year to something that just does what we need. And so what's important is that a CRM does what you need, but nothing more, nothing less, because if it does too much, it makes it clunky and harder to use and slower. So what functionality do you need on a CRM? And what functionality, because if you use a CRM right now and you're unhappy with it, talk about why you're unhappy with it. Talk about the functionality that you wish it had or that you want to have in your CRM, okay? Put some of your thoughts in the chat box Okay, provide some great information to everyone here and as well to me. So here's what I see. From, all right, the local. First and foremost, you're already out there doing all these interviews. I want a CRM that takes the intelligence about people, takes the information that you have learned about people, and it automatically adds it to your CRM. First and foremost, you're already doing the work. I want this stuff to be automatically added to a CRM. So you don't have to retype it out. Next, okay, I want to, be, if we have a CRM, we can use the interviews in other ways. And we can use surveys in a follow-up to gather more information from the people that you built a relationship with, to gather more information, to qualify even more, to fact find even more, to gather more intelligence about them, to put information about them in the CRM that you know will be useful for your follow-up, and it'll be useful for you knowing if and when they're moving, and it'll be useful for you being able to add more value to them in the follow-up. And, be, and we know that if you give value to people through the interviews, whatever questions you want to ask about them, they're going to want to answer 
because even if they're not looking to buy and sell right now, they would love to help you out and help you get to know them better and answer a survey about them so you can add more value to their life. Okay, and then the ability to create a survey, send it out, and when they fill it out, have that information, again, automatically added to your CRM. I have not seen done before, and I know is extremely valuable. Okay, the next thing that I want a CRM to do is to help prioritize the people that you need to follow up with. Okay, here are the people you need to book interviews with. Here are the people you need to follow up with. There is also another thing that, that we have not been able to find a tool for that I know we can build. My developer said we could build. No one has built this one. A local influencer finder. There, there is not the ability, there is no t tool out there that helps you find people who have lots of fans and followers on social media in your neighborhood. Doesn't exist. I have looked. And if you know of one, please tell me, but I cannot find it. And so we want to build this one, all right? There's influencer finders for fitness. There's, there's influencer finders for categories of people, but not for local. No, there's no technology helps you find people in your community of lots of fans and followers. And that would be like, ding, 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 go interview them, go meet them. Okay, um, and go leverage influencers because influencer marketing is a real trend in the world. Okay, so we're excited to build that one in the future. I see that. And then the CRM will automatically tell you, here are people you need to follow up with. Here are people you need to interview with. Okay, here are people that have yet to subscribe to your neighborhood website you need to reach out to. Okay, and I want to make it really easy to start categorizing and grouping people in your CRM because what I'm going to talk about the next feature is once you label people, once you um, talk about, you know, these people have kids and pets and the kinds of pets they have and the types of kids and ages of kids and this is the job they do, this is the interest they have, they like sports, they like food, they like live music, they like all these different things. When you know this information about people, through the interview and through your follow-up and you put it into a CRM, there's some really cool messaging. There's some really cool follow-up that we can actually automate, okay, for you all. So another feature that I see is automated, okay, done for you, local-centric, hyper-local, and personalized follow-up through email and Facebook Messenger, okay, to people in your database, okay? So my question to you and to everyone here to help us build this, this idea out, okay, is what type of emails have you found work best with your database and sphere of influence? What types of emails or what types of messaging have you found you do to your database and to your sphere of influence in your follow-up what are the topics of those emails? What's the content of those emails and of that messaging that you find gets a lot of opens, gets a lot of click-through rates, gets a lot of engagement, gets a lot of thank yous and replies and positivity around? Um, write that in the chat box because that's going to be really great information for everyone here to start thinking about doing this now. Before we build the technology to do it for you, Everyone start writing in the chat box the kind of content they put in their emails and in their social media follow-up that really works. The topics and the, and, the, uh, and the themes of that content. Because when you have a CRM where you get people's likes and dislikes and information about who they are as people and the demographic information, and we Park Bench have all this local content and we're always going to get better at this local content, we want to tie it together so that we can send out emails and send out Facebook messages on your behalf saying, hey, John, I know you have kids and there's this event happening in the neighborhood that's for kids. I thought you should know about it. Here's a link. Your local real estate expert, Chris, okay? Hey, Jane, here's this music event happening in the community. I know you love music, and so I wanted to share it with you to make sure you know about it. Your friendly local realtor, Martha. 
Okay, these are the kinds of things that I want to do, and I know we can do. Our developers, we already talked about the technology around it, and so um, we want to be able to tie a CRM to a done for you automated messaging that uses the local content, uses the stuff you put about people in the CRM, and we start sending out messages because based on where a person lives and what they live in, as we get better with content. And we and in your CRM, you start putting in how long they've lived in a home, and we know the turnover rate for that area because we want to start doing those market research for you automatically. Um, and we have a real estate search in there. We can actually start automating a lot of really relevant, personalized information about people, right? If Park Bench has real estate information, if Park Bench has local information, and you put information about people in your Parkbench CRM, we can tie it all together to do some follow-up messaging for you without you having to lift a finger that will add value to those people and it help you get more follow-up done without you lifting a finger. That is possible with the right um, technology and engagement from you to put information about people in a CRM. Next, okay. This is something that's on my mind because as entrepreneurs, there's so much to do, okay? Um, solopreneurs, you guys have some of the toughest job out there. You got to do sales. You got to do marketing. You got to do customer service. You got to do uh, negotiations. You got to help people buy homes. You got to be good at research. You got to be good at reporting. You got to be good at administrative stuff, legal, accounting, finance, the whole thing. And big picture, I'm trying to just unload so much of that off your shoulders. And a big piece of that is tracking all of that work, right? Project management, okay? Task workflow automation. And some CRMs do this. So my question to everyone is, do you have tools that you currently use to help you with your project management and help you with your task management and help you stay on top of all the things that you need to do so that you do them right and you do them on time? Do you have any tools right now that you use for that? And if you don't, just start thinking about and ask or answer this question, what are the groups of tasks or projects that you have? or that you need to have checklists for, okay? So an example is you have all the things you need to do for buyers. Once you have a buyer, there's a whole bunch of things you need to do for a buyer, and you need to make sure you have a checklist of all those things with detailed information about how to do that task right and, and make sure that you are able to put the right deadline for it and have that person also be attached to it so that they're also aware of all the things that you're gonna do for them by when. There needs to be open, transparent communication between both the person that you're doing this for and yourself. So what are those groups of tasks? What are those projects that you have to do in your business? The things that I see are, one, you have a bunch of stuff for the interview system that you want to get done. You have a bunch of stuff for prospecting and for follow-up that you want to get done. Okay, There's a bunch of stuff that you want to... Um, do for buyers that you're working with, for sellers. There's a bunch of reporting that you've got to get done on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly basis, depending on the marketing that you're doing, okay? And so in the future, we have different tasks and checklists and best practices for if you're doing direct mailers or postcards or just listed, just sold, or bus benches or, you know, lead generation, open houses, all these different things that we as a group come together to create the best practice checklist for all these activities and also finance and accounting because we have businesses and we got to manage that stuff. So these are just some of the things that I want to build some task or workflow management around so that when a new project comes up, when a new client comes up, you just go find checklist, start, and then you review it you delete the tasks that are irrelevant to you, you add based on the project and when you're starting it and you, you know the situation, and then you just go. And you, and you share it with the, another person 
um, who who needs to be there to like a client to to watch you do all this stuff for them, which makes it very exciting for the client because they're like, wow, look at what Patty's doing for me. Look what Sandy's doing for me. Okay, um, so these are some of the things that we uh, want to build. And sometimes when I say build, I'll give you some context. We're either going to build it natively to our platform or we're going to be partnering with a company to do this with the, with them for you. Um, so we need to find companies that, and that's why I ask you if there's any companies that you're using that you love, because these are the ones I would turn to first and foremost to see if I can create some partnership where we can come together and collaborate and, and build something a whole lot faster. Um, that is also what you want. Okay. Next is social media dashboard with some auto content creation, some auto post creation. And here's some context, the reason why we need need and want to do this. This one we absolutely will be building natively to us because no one else is doing this. So the, the auto posting idea, okay, um, and if, and, I'm going to read through some of these comments because they're going fast and furious. And so if any guys like anyone's comments, please let everyone know that, hey, what a great idea, Sandy. Okay. Um, like Sandy's got some email ideas I can see. Now, when it comes to social media, those auto posting tools that we built, the auto post to Twitter, LinkedIn, and at one point we had Facebook until Facebook went to Congress and all of a sudden started shutting down all of that functionality to every company around the world. Um, th that was a growth hack. That is what we call gray area in the tech world. Those platforms don't particularly like us doing that, um, but we do it because we can at the moment until they shut us down. And the way the industries are going, I imagine that all the platforms will no longer allow people to automatically post content on a person's behalf without without that person doing anything or at least approving the post. Okay, now what they will allow are companies like Hootsuite and Buffer. Okay, and so our vision for this is that we will automatically create content for you based on the news, the events, the deals, and the interviews, and the blog, and the content that's on your website, and the real estate contents on your website. We're going to automatically create social media content for you, and then you will just log in, and you'll just see it, and you'll go approve, deny, approve, approve, edit, make the edits, approve, approve, deny, 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 approve, and it's a quick way for you to be able to get lots of social media posting done while we fall within the rules of all the platforms so that when we build this functionality, we don't get shut down like we did like Facebook uh, because you know they just don't like us truly automatically posting stuff for, for people without that person actually going in and approving it, okay? Um, and the cool thing is, we were never able to do this stuff for Instagram and for Pinterest, but in this new model, we will be able to do this for Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest, just like Hootsuite is able to. Um, so we're really excited to build this kind of platform so you guys can post more local content on your social media that you approve of, because some of the stuff that we even aggregate, you wouldn't want posted on your social media. Um, even though it's local, you know, you have your own audience that's maybe a little bit more tailored to a certain demographic. And so this is also a, a tool that's going to allow you to post better content on your social media in a really quick and seamless way. Okay. Next. All right. One of the things that we want to do because we are able to do this quite easily is if you don't like your personal website and you want an IDX real estate website, so a real estate website that's simple, it's professional, it's got a real estate search on it, plugged in through your MLS, through IDX, and you know it's got a blog, it's got a contact section, it's optimized for SEO and for lead generation, we want to start building these websites for you. Some of you have amazing websites and you won't need this, but some of you do want a new website 
And so this is why we want to start because as a website creator, it's easy for us to create these things. Um, and we will be building websites that integrate with your park bench. So a lot of clients have come to us saying, hey, can you integrate park bench with my personal website? So on my personal website, I'm also showing my interviews and local news and local events and local deals and stuff like that. And so we want to start building, you know, these, these baller websites, these local leader real estate websites, okay, um, for people that, that want to have a new personal website, a, a chrisrealestate.com, you know, uh, Debbie and John are the best.com, right? So um, this is what we want to have. And so my question for you, okay, what are your favorite website providers? If everyone, if one of you, if, if some of you are happy with your website provider, okay, put them in the chat box because until we do this, which, which is more further away, some of you may want to look at some of these website providers that your peers are very happy with. So if you're very happy with your website provider, put that in the chat box. And if you have some thoughts about the functionality that you need or want on your personal website, okay, that that you don't see Parkbench having, like you notice, if you'll notice, Parkbench tries to have, so your microsite on Parkbench, we try to have as much functionality as possible on it so that so that whatever you need digitally, it's on your Parkbench microsite, but there's some stuff that just doesn't make sense to have on, your, on the local Parkbench microsite, and so that's why it's good to have your own personal website for certain things. Okay, an IDX is one of them. Okay, um, uh, something that 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 covers your entire metro area, right? You only own a certain area in Park Bench, but you service a much wider area. So this needs to be geographically agnostic. Okay, um, so it's more just general for you and for your brand. Um, it also needs to be way more brand centric so we can have way more brand relevant stuff on there versus the neighborhood sites that we want to keep it a little bit more um, general so it's not too salesy and cheesy. Okay, what's some of the functionality that you love or want or need that maybe you don't even have than you've thought about you wanting on your personal branded real estate website? Okay, put that in the chat box. Okay. And if any of you guys have any questions okay, or comments, if I'm here, let's save it for this. so right down. And at the end, once I've gone through all this content, then we, I'll, I'll talk about whatever you guys want to talk about, okay? And answer whatever questions you have about the company and the future and stuff like that. Next, okay, is a mobile app for creating content. So I don't know if you guys know, but we have a mobile app for you. If you go on the App Store, if you are an Apple user, if you have an iPhone, okay, you can go on the App Store and search Park Bench, and there is an app, okay, for you, the client. It's not for the general public. This app was specifically built um, to help you create content and create your interviews faster and easier. So if you don't know what this app does right now is you open it up and you can do your inner, you can record your interviews and you can get your interviews started on here. So it will link with your profile. Okay. And Android is definitely coming. Okay. In the new year, that is something that's on our minds. Okay. But we did a survey and we had more Apple users than Android users. Um, so that's why we started with that one. Okay, but right now you go there, you press record. All right, so when you're in the interview, you just have the phone recording your interview and you can automatically put the person's name, email, phone number and save a draft for that interview. And then what happens is when you go back to your desk, okay, it automatically transcribes that audio file. So when you go back to your desk, you see the questions that you wanna fill out for the interview and you see a transcription of the recording automatically done that is already done it's already out there it's a really cool app okay who here has used it okay let everyone know what you think about the app if you have some critical feedback 
it's really still in beta um, as we've been getting feedback from people. We put out a first version. People have been happy with it overall from what from what we've received feedback wise. So if you've used it, let everyone know. Let everyone know what you like and dislike about it. Okay. Um, now, and answer this question because here's where we want to go with this app is what functionality would you like an app to have when you think about if my phone could do this during the interview process, it would help me create interviews faster and it would help me create content faster. So our idea for the enhancement of the app, okay, is the app will guide you through making video. So that's next is the app will guide you through making video. You actually can right now take video on the app and the video will automatically be sent to YouTube. And so when you go back to your desk, you'll see a transcription of your audio file of the interview and you'll see the YouTube link for the video that you did. So you can put it into the interview, okay? Um, now that video file and the audio file is saved on your phone. So right now you will take that file and you'll upload it to your YouTube and you'll upload it to your uh, Facebook. But in the future, we want you to be able to take a video on your phone. Okay. It automatically goes to your YouTube. It's automatically optimized for SEO. So we name it correctly. We title it correctly. We automatically post it to your Facebook so that natively the file is posted to your Facebook. And then the link, the YouTube link automatically goes into your park bench control panel so you can easily add it to the interview, okay? We've already talked about this functionality and our developers know that it's possible, okay? And then when you create an audio file, not only do you wanna transcribe it, but we wanna help you start a podcast and we wanna automatically send that audio file to your podcast, okay? So these are some really advanced functionality ideas that we have. So big picture, when you think about, hey, if the Parkbench app could do this for me, it would make it really easy for me to do my interview. It would make it easier for me to post content on the website or write reviews on the website or uh, you know, do what I really wanna do on my phone, okay? If you find something difficult, on your phone that you want to be able to do more easily on your phone, um, then you can do that. Will you be able to edit the video with the app? Um, I think we will be able to allow you to crop the ends away from the video, a simple cropping, but that's probably it. Um, if you want to edit a video, it's got to go to iMovie and Filmora and, and, and stuff like that. Um, but if you just want to crop the edges from the video file, um, I will develop. What you can do is when that file goes to YouTube, you on YouTube, you can crop the ends out. And so part of the training that hopefully you go through through the online course or if you want to call in or attend uh, Matt or Alicia's live group training is we teach you how to do video, how to do video interviews that only require cropping of the ends. You're, that we teach you how to start and end a video in a one-shot take so you don't need to do any crazy editing throughout that you just need to crop the ends away and resave it, and then it's a great video interview or a great video file, okay? That's the skill in doing video to be able to do that. Um, and, and if we're not able to do it on the app, you at least can do that on YouTube very easily, okay? I'm gonna make a note, did we done? I'm going to get Lorna to call you. There's a solution how to do that. There's a technique to prevent the interviewee from talking too long or allowing the interviewee to ramble and not having to edit the video. There's, there's two types of videos for you to create, and I'll get them to call you to talk about that. All right. So when it comes to technology, okay, 
everyone in the chat box, okay, Camtasia and, uh, and Filmora are great platforms. So is iMovie. If you use a different platform to edit video, please put that and you're happy with it, you like it, you find it easy, please put that in the chat box to let your peers know because that would be very helpful. Okay, um, and that concludes the technical side of where I want Parkbench to go. Those are the things that are at the top of my mind for the things that I want to build for you all in the next year uh, to two years. Okay, hopefully we can get it done in the year and I'll talk about at the end what's going to happen to be able to do this in one year. Um, but conservatively, I think it's going to take a little bit longer. Next is the marketing services division of Parkbench. So I don't know if some of you are on the call right now, but we, ha we have clients that we work with that we do retargeting for, that we do lead generation for, that we do, um, we've done some video editing for. Okay, that we have sold, you know, like we have an agency inside this that people have bought these services because we are better and cheaper than the competition. Okay, so our claim, our claim when it comes to marketing services forever, will that when you, when you compare apples to apples, which in the marketing world is actually, you'd be surprised that, that the companies will say they do the same thing, but they really don't do the same thing. And if you're an experienced, you know the difference between what company A is doing and what company B is doing. So when you come to us and say, here's the marketing service that I'm getting done by this company or this person, and we are able to compare value to value, okay, we will price match. If we don't already beat them, we will price match value to value. Okay. Now, what you might find is that we'll we'll tell you that that company isn't doing these things. That for a little bit extra extra money, the the ROI, the value you get, is well worth that extra um, monthly fee for someone to do this for you. Okay. But value to value, we will always price match because our goal is that you have everything in one place because that. Like every good high performing company, like every great team, like every great brokerage, it's all, everything is all done in house. And we want to be your in house marketing team as well as your in house technology team. So, question to everybody that will provide good insight Who are your favorite marketing companies and services apart from Park Bench, which I know hopefully we're at the top of that list? Who are your favorite marketing companies and services and why? Okay. Or what other forms of marketing are working for you and why? Put those, put that in the chat box. What other forms of marketing are working for you and why? And who are your favorite marketing companies or service providers and why? Maybe you have a guy and that guy or gal who does this service for you is great and Maybe that person can handle more business and we can throw their name out to the group and our peers can reach out to them for the service that you're getting from that person, okay? Here are the services that we want to do. And so if you're getting any of this done by anyone else, ask us what we can do for you and for how much, okay? We will price match value to value, okay? Retargeting. All right, any of you guys use AdWorks or whatever, we will freaking destroy them. I love them, they're a great company, good for them, okay, but we will destroy them. Okay, retargeting, lead generation, okay? Any of you guys using bold leads, tiger leads, um, some company doing Facebook and Google or whatever, okay? We're really good at this stuff, whatever, whoever you're using, we will just tell us what's happening and what you're getting out of it. We will crush you or them. <laughs> we will crush them, okay? We can do lead generation for them. Email database building. You want to build an email database? You want to get emails for as cheap as possible, okay, which is the difference. There's a difference between getting buyer and seller leads and getting emails, okay? So if you want to get a, a bigger email database because you like that, okay, we can do that for you, okay? If you want to be creating more blog content, Okay, um, and you want to rise up this. If you want your personal website to rise up the search engines, we can do that for you. Okay, 
If you want someone to do the personalized manual side of social media, okay, if you want social media to be managed for you by a human being, okay, we can do that for you. If you want someone to edit videos for you because you have some really crazy video editing that needs to get done for a seller or for some video that you want to do, okay, and you've, you've filmed a bunch of footage and you want a really technical video editor to do it for you, okay, we can do that. If you want someone, okay, to book interviews, okay, or to write interviews for you, I really hope you don't, but I know some people do. They want this stuff booked for them, written for them, or promoted for them, okay? We can help you out there. I really dislike inter uh, booking interviews for people because lots of people have had leads and referrals and clients come from that interaction. We've had lots of clients that in the process of booking interviews, before they even do the interview, all of a sudden they're in a conversation with that person and all of a sudden they get a referral, they get a lead, or that person becomes their client. They haven't even done the interview yet, okay? Um, but if you're really busy, you need some extra push or some nudge, maybe you're going for 30 and 30 or something, okay, we can help out there. I even have finally worked, got a partner for print marketing, okay? Flyers, postcards, business cards, okay? If you need print done for you, Okay, and graphic design. Okay, we can do that for you. Okay, so what marketing services are you currently using and why? If you want any of these services, if you want to inquire to learn more about these services, uh, email support at parkbench.com with the services that you're interested in learning about, um, and we will tell you about them. Um, and if you want to do it, we're happy to do this for you guys. Okay. Because we want to, if, if you're going to do this stuff, we want to do it. Oh yeah. Beat Vista print. No problem. Um, in terms of pricing. Yeah. I'm uh, Vista print e print may have some products that my guy has not been able to get to yet, but there are a suite of products, um, that I found a guy for, um, that will beat, uh, Vista print and e print prices for the same quality and stuff, okay? Next, all right, so now, okay, I wanna focus on the business owners. So those are some ideas. So if you have any other ideas of things that you think Parkbench should be doing for you or should be building some technology for you to help you, put that in the chat box. So, all right, um, let me try to play Santa, all right? so. Say, I wish Park Bench, I hope Park Bench can do this for me or for my business. Or I wish Park Bench could do this on the platform, okay, it, with regards to you. Because now I want to talk about the things that I want to be building and think the vision that we have, okay, um, for the business owner. So Lisa's already talked to my guy, Kyle, okay. So there's some testimony right there. He beats Vista Print. So if any guys want to get connected um, to my guy, Kyle, um, just say, please introduce me to Kyle in the chat box. Now, for business owners, okay, what functionality do you think we should add to help local businesses and professionals make more money? First and foremost, that's what they want. You make another business owner money, and they are going to want to uh, help you make money and be your best friend. All right. If you guys have to go, appreciate you. See you later, Pat. Okay. What functionality should we be building to help local professionals and local businesses, okay, make more money and build their online presence? See you, Norman. Okay. I got three things on my mind for the business owners. Number one, I have a new reviews system. This is an idea I thought about day one, five years ago, and when you think about the trends of AI and machine learning and the needs and wants of locals and people, um, th this, this idea is still just as good as it was five years ago. 
And the idea is this. Right now, I see an issue with how people write reviews online. They're writing them out. It's very difficult for a company like Yelp or TripAdvisor to pull information out of those reviews to then provide really great recommendations. The other thing that those companies aren't thinking about is what real estate professionals can do with that information. Because if you know the the likes and dislikes of a person based on their reviews of local businesses, then you were able to add more value to them as a local professional. Those companies aren't even thinking about that. And so I want to build a new review system that will help businesses understand what they're good at, what they're bad at, and what they're known for. That will help people get really good recommendations of where they should, what products they should buy and what services they should buy because of what they have shown us they like and dislike. And then there's ways that we can use as local professionals that database so you can provide more value to them. Okay. So there's a new review system that's more data centric that will help us provide more value once we get that data. Next is a neighborhood loyalty card. So Part of that comes with the user app, which I'll get to in a second. But when we actually have a user app, I want to have a neighborhood loyalty card so that businesses can say, hey, if you show me that you live and work here and therefore you deserve the neighborhood loyalty card and maybe we get people to pay 10 bucks for it, okay, and you guys get a little cut out of it. Okay, and that becomes another revenue stream. Really big picture, if you guys have heard me before, my big goal is to help you have more revenue streams for your business. Because, listen, commissions will go down over time. Will it happen in the next year? No. Will it happen five, ten years? Probably. They're going to go down. But... You should have to spend less time and less money to do the service. And so then your profit is still okay. And the smart brokerages, the smart companies are helping agents make money in other ways. I want to help you make money in other ways. Okay. And that will allow you to brush to offering better comp plan, uh, commission structures to your clients while providing the same service because you know you're making money in other ways. And so the neighborhood loyalty cards, an idea where you can make money in other ways by getting the consumers to buy this loyalty card, which will give them discounts every time they shop local. And so local businesses will say, hey, if you show me you have this neighborhood loyalty card, I will give you 5, 10, 15% off every single time you come. It's a better version. I've done the research. I've done, uh, I've done the research both in person as well as online. Instead of you getting those punch cards, like the buy 10 subs and get one free, it's everyone loves the loyalty card where it's just like, listen, if you're going to give me a whole free sub at one point, you might as well just give me five, eight, ten percent off every single time I come. Um, it's the same amount of money. It's the same discount. And I'm actually more likely to keep buying versus store all these punch cards. OK. Uh, bomb bomb. So video in email. Okay, that, that's the thing. Video messaging, video in email. That is something that's on our minds. The final thing I want to build for businesses, which we have already done lots of thinking around since, again, day one, uh, because when I was building this for my neighborhood, I was just thinking about adding value to the homeowners. And what I find a lot of the, the, the directories online don't do, Google, Yelp, Yellow Pages, uh, TripAdvisor, all the big ones, they don't have industry specific profiles. So the profile for the fitness gym looks the same as the coffee shop, looks the same as the art gallery, looks the same as the hair salon, looks the same as the interior designer, looks the same as the mortgage broker and the real estate agent. It's all the freaking same. And that is stupid. Um, so I would love to have category specific profiles. And that takes time, it takes money to build that thing out, but that experience is that, that a business owner is able to showcase their stuff in the way that they would love to showcase it um, is where the future is going to go for helping, you know, for whatever platforms are serving local businesses, which we hope we become the number one platform to serve local businesses. Okay. 
These are the ideas for business owners. So is there any other functionality that you think, and if I've missed any of your comments, I apologize. I will go through them as always and write my notes out and send them back to you, okay? What functionality do you think we could add to help local businesses and local professionals to serve them, to help them, to help them make more money, to help them build their online presence? What are some ideas and some advice that you have for us to provide a better experience and to provide more value to so that when you think about the value that you're bringing to the marketplace, you are bringing more value to the marketplace? Okay. Next are the homeowners. So what functionality, right off the bat, I wanna ask you, what functionality do you think we should add to provide more value to the homeowners and the people who live and work, not the business owners, but the people who live and work in your communities? Job postings, great idea, Randall. What, I'm gonna write that one down. What, um, functionality do you think we can add to the homeowners? Okay, so I talk about the user app, okay? So we've actually already kind of started building it. Um, so it's not like that one's really far away. So that people can open up their phone and it geolocates them and says, you're in blank neighborhood. And there'll be just buttons, news, events, deals, interviews, blog, real estate search, and they'll just click on a button and they'll just start browsing through, you know, the information related to that area. And your, your ad will be there. Your profile will be there. And it's just a app version of the website. And so all the coupons and all the reviews and all the loyalty cards will all be done on the app. The other thing that we want to build for people is a classified section and a message board, okay? So statistically, um, if you look at the research, Nextdoor has paved the way to let everyone know the kind of stuff that people from a social aspect, from a posting aspect, uh, people want. And I let them, right? I love Nextdoor because they're working on social, which is so much more difficult. That's why they have to raise all that money and, and waste a whole lot of money. Um, and they've really shown what people actually care to do on these platforms. And so we can add that stuff later. Okay. So classifieds and message board. We actually at one point used to have that. Who here has been at Park Bench long enough to remember the time when we had classifieds and message board? We actually had the functionality on the website. We just took it down. Okay. Um, because, you know, it, it, it was... It, it takes some money and some time and some effort um, to, to get that thing going, to make it useful. Um, and, you know, we just weren't there yet as a company. And so um, we took it away. We used to actually have that. All right. Next, okay, is market data. So we already have the real estate data in the U.S. And down the road, we want to get the real estate data somehow. We still haven't quite figured that one out for Canada and for all of our Australian and New Zealand clients um, for, and for other markets. We, we, we think about how do we get the data for them. So my first question, okay, is what sources guide you so that you can learn about the market, so you can be more intelligent? What sources give you information about the market? Okay, so you can relay that information to your clients or to your database or you, that you put in your newsletter. Like where do you go to get your market analysis and, and how do you figure out the market forecast? Okay, where what, what are the resources? This is really great for everyone here, all right? Until we build this, where do you currently go because your peers could benefit from those sources as well? Where do you get your market analysis from? Where do you get your market data and your market forecasting from? Down the road, we want to provide that to both you and to the homeowner. We want to be the source that people go to um, to get that information. Okay, It's not that it's unique and it's a big differentiator. We just want to be able to do it as good as the other websites like Zillow and Trulia um, and stuff like that. Okay, Because if they're already on the website looking at the blogs, looking at the news and events, you know, and they want to just all of a sudden be like, oh, here's some market, you know, highlights, real estate highlights. 
um, then they just know that this is a one-stop shop to know what is going on in the community. Okay. Next, okay. See, Irene, is for the platform as a whole, parkbench.com. So there's some other stuff like really big picture that doesn't kind of go into those buckets of like for you or for the homeowner or for the business. Here is what our thoughts are for things that we're going to be doing for Park Bench. First, we are going to be the first company to map the entire world, all the neighborhoods, cities, and towns, which may not sound like it does anything for you, but there is no company that does this. There, uh, Maponics is the leading company, which by the end of January, we will be better than them. Um, and I, I was appalled that they were the best in the industry. Um, no one has a map. Uh, like every piece of land is a map of an area. And it's either a neighborhood or it's a town or a city. You know, that's it. That's that's the options for the world. It's either a neighborhood or it's rural, and therefore there aren't any neighborhoods yet, and it's a town and a city. No one has done that. And by us doing that, we get better at data. We get better at being the local platform that no one can compete with. This right here is a huge reason why we and you will stand out and always be able to have something that your competition won't. And when we get to the next vision of us becoming a brokerage, this is something that um, companies have partnered with. Even next door doesn't even have a good one like this. We're going to have the best one out of anybody, um, and and brokerages want this, okay? Uh, but they're not going to get it because we're just going to be it, all right? Next is SEO, all right? So that's what's happening. Is, oh, part of um, the what you will realize, what you will see from this map, okay? A lot of you have bought zip codes, okay? What you will notice is that we're converting those zip codes into neighborhoods because the brand of parkbench.com slash 85022, you know, or whatever that number is, that's not nice. It's not great. It doesn't look good. It's it, branding wise, marketing wise, remembering wise. It's not the end goal. We're not trying to, to have you be, you know, Mr. 85022. We're trying to have you be Mr. Rosedale, Mrs. Liberty Village, Mrs. You know, Southwest Minneapolis, like whatever your area is, you want to be the name of the area. That's what people say. And so what you will notice is we are going to be cutting up a lot of your areas into tiny little neighborhood microsites. So you, if you, if you haven't already seen it, and you have a zip code and, and you just have a zip code as you see on the website, over time, that zip code will turn into lots of different neighborhood microsites. You will still have the zip code if you if you want it. Um, but but what you will get is you will get the, the neighborhoods. You will be the ambassador for all the neighborhoods within the, the, the zip code of the town or the city that you bought. And then if you want one name, okay, if you want one name to to just turn to so you don't have to worry about promoting 10 different microsites, I get that. So we will be bill allowing you to come up with some parent name, some group name for your area so you can be Mrs. Lakefront, Louisiana, you know, whatever it is. and. There will be some constraints with how you can name it because you can't, you know, if you only own a portion of Toronto, you can't call yourself Toronto. And if you, you know, own um, a, a couple zip codes in South Dallas, you can't all of a sudden call yourself all of South Dallas because you don't own all of South Dallas. Um, so there will be some constraints to what you can name it, but we will together be able to come up with a great name that we will look at Google Trends, okay, because there's actually a science to how to naming, how to name your area so that it shows up higher in the search engines and it's in 
Uh, there, there's data that supports that people actually call it this and that people actually are searching for this. So that's the name that you do want. So um, as we go through this transition of, of remapping and renaming, we will be contacting you to help you uh, optimize your site. Okay. Neighborhoods.com seem to have the most broken down neighborhood mapping. I will check that one out. We have never seen good sources. I'm always looking for good sources. And so thank you, Heather, for reading the question on the screen. If you have a good map for your area, if you know of a good website, or if you have a PDF that, that's a map of the neighborhoods inside your area, inside the area that you bought with us or on a greater scale inside your town or city or metro area or county, please email it to us and we will use your information to make a better platform for yourself and for everybody. Okay, so if you know of a good website or good, you have a good PDF that has a map of the neighborhoods, please send it to us. This is very, very, very important for you and for the platform and for the greater good of um, the whole network, okay? Now, when it comes to SEO, which is a huge reason why we're doing this and why we do all of our content stuff, here's a fun fact, okay? Our SEO is really good, as some of you might have seen. Um, the longer you're with us, you start to see that your interviews rank really well, your blogs rank really well. Um, and, and we, uh, uh, anywhere from 40 to 60% of our traffic comes from search engines. When we think of Park Bench as a whole, 40 to 60% of our traffic comes from the search engines. And here's a fun fact. We have never hired anyone to improve our SEO. Never. It, it, because it's not, it's not like the be all end all. Like I know the value of SEO and the benefits of it. And, and I know that over time it just gets better and better and better. But we knew that we had a very SEO centric platform and business model. So we knew our SEO would be good without even having any attention to it. And we were oh so excited of hiring next year, our, our first person to actually dig deep and improve the SEO of our website. Um, and, and I am so excited to see the benefits that it will have for all of you, knowing that we have never had any attention on it. It's gonna be amazing. You're all gonna be just getting so much more awareness and traffic and ranking. Um, it's, I'm, I'm very excited to have SEO be a project in 2019. All right, we got two. We got two more things to talk about when we talk about the future of Park Bench, and this is the 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 end goal. This is the big future of Park Bench. That if you've been on some of our past webinars, you've seen some of my videos I've talked about, and this is Park Real, okay, a new kind of real estate brokerage. Okay, there are some people who are, you know, they want to hide the fact that they're thinking about doing it. I'm not hiding it. We're doing it. All right, this is going to happen. And then really, really big picture, we have a really cool idea. It is a new kind of business that the world has never seen before. And it's called the neighborhood brokerage. Okay, and yes, everyone will get a copy of these notes. All right, now let's first talk about Park Bench Realty because I have some questions that I want you guys, I have a survey, okay? So who here has done the survey? Thank you, okay? Let everyone know how long it took you uh, to do. Who here has not done the survey? I, I have a series of questions to help me learn more about your needs and wants from a brokerage perspective, to help me start thinking about the future development of a brokerage that I see happening in two or three years. Okay. Thank you, Donna. Okay. First and foremost, you are the brokers. Okay. All right. You are the brokerage and there, there will be, so if you don't want to get your brokerage license, there will be incentives for people to be the broker for the other park bench agents in their metro area. Ideally, I encourage you all to become brokers so that you start your own brokerage. Okay, amongst Park Bench. Okay. Um, and if you haven't received the survey, also say that in the chat box and we'll resend it out uh, afterwards. 
First and foremost, you will all be the brokerage and we will help you start a brokerage in your area because I want you to receive the financial upside of owning a brokerage. And I'm going to make it easier than a company has ever made it for you to have a brokerage and have the financial upside of having a brokerage. Okay. Next, okay. If you want to build a team, we want to help you build a team. If you just want to have a solo business, that is fine. We can help you do that. And through the mar marketing services and through the technology, you will be the most efficient solo agent out there or one of the most. That's the intention. Okay, because we are going to be doing all the technology stuff and all the marketing stuff and all the platform stuff before we do this. It is very important. This future vision is not happening until we've figured out all the technology pieces and we figured out all the marketing pieces and we have got lots more local businesses and homeowners using the platform because those are things that other brokerages don't have. And even though there are companies like Compass and Keller Williams who are doing great things in developing new technologies and developing marketing for their agents, they, because they started with a brokerage first, they do not have a local platform that local businesses and homeowners use on a daily and weekly basis. And that is a huge, huge differentiator for our future vision of being a real estate brokerage that the world's never seen before. So we are going to be doing all of this stuff first, okay? We are going to be doing all this stuff first before we turn into a brokerage. Um, Patricia, I would love for you to give me some more detail about what you're talking about because I am constantly thinking about the laws okay now next we are our goal is the, the the vision of the brokerage is if you want to start a brokerage we can help you start one if you want to start a team we'll help you start one and all the project management and operations and marketing and technology that you need that we will be able to do that okay for you next is 24 7 support I have not seen this. Good tech companies have 24/7 support. Okay. The other thing that we're not we're going to wait until we have is when we have a brand that's well known in the marketplace and well used by people in the marketplace because of the platform. That's going to be a huge differentiator for you. Okay. A lot of people talk about one of the issues that they have when they go start their own independent brokerage is they don't have the community and the support and the training and the technology and the brand of a Keller Williams, of a Remax. And so that's why we're going to be building the brand up so that when we convert, there won't be as much of a struggle with, oh, Park Bench. Who is Park Bench? The world will know who Park Bench is because they know about us from a different perspective. The cool thing about our brokerage is we will maintain one realtor or team per area. And that's why when we talk about buying area and buying the area for the future, you may want to make sure you own enough area for your future business because it, that area will become a whole lot more important when we become a brokerage. Okay. And you want to make sure that you have it over someone else, okay? And so if you want to buy more area because you work more area, then reach out to support at parkbench.com. The, the add-on expenses are, are not as great as the upfront expenses uh, that you all uh, had to pay, okay, to get started, all right? But that area is gonna become a whole lot more important when we have a brokerage. Next. Because we will be making money off technology and off marketing, because we will be your one-stop shop for this, I see that we will be able to, with the volume that we'll have, we will be able to have the lowest fees in the industry in terms of when, when, a, when you think about the money off your commission that goes to a brokerage because they have overhead to pay 
for office space and for staff and admin and transaction coordinators and blah, 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 whatever that is, whether it be a percentage or it be a flat fee, because of our business model being that of a tech company, okay, and a marketing company, we will be able to help you hang your hat, okay, as a real estate broker and agent or team for less than everybody else. And the reason why we want to do this, okay, is because if you ever want, if you want to make good money offering the same service that you're offering to the end consumer, but for less money, which is what the homeowners want and need, and I promise you, there will be someone figuring it out how, and I think this is the model how, there needs to be a brokerage model that doesn't take as much of your money. So you don't have to charge as much money because you keep more of it. And the reason why I want to do this is because I did this in fitness. Fitness is the exact same thing. Fitness professionals forever always got a percentage of their hourly rate taken from the franchise. And I came up with a model where we came, we gave the technology and the marketing to the fitness professionals, they paid us a monthly fee or a yearly fee, and they kept all their money. Okay, right? And I see that that real estate is the exact same. You will pay a monthly or yearly fee to Park Bench to handle all of your technology, your marketing, your operations, and we will be able to let you keep all your money, as if it was your own independent brokerage. But by being a part of the this different kind of franchise model, you now get the benefits of the franchise, which is the community, the network, the support, the brand. Um, so I did this in fitness. I see real estate being no different. No one's done it yet. I don't know why. Uh, and, and and I see this being where we can go as a company. And that benefits the homeowner, benefits you, um, and someone's going to do this. Um, so that's a little bit of the reason why, if you haven't heard it before. All right. So in this model, okay, in order for us to offer less fees, okay, cloud-based brokerages, okay? I love what some brokerages are, are doing with the whole cloud-based thing because office space is just a thing of the past. There's co-working spaces, there's home offices, people work remotely, people work out of coffee shops, easier and better than ever. Okay? And so this is something that I see we may partner with a co-working space, just like EXP did with Regis. Okay, um, these are some of the ideas that are going through my head. Okay, again, this is this is two, three years at least, I think, off, um, and that's why these are just the ideas that are forming. And so, any questions you have, any things that you think I should be thinking about, um, that that's the idea. Okay. All right, how will PB handle the file compliance? No different than a brokerage will, okay? We will hire people to do it. Um, and I think as a company, if we have enough clients using enough of our technology and marketing, a percentage of our net profit can go towards funding all of, of the administrative stuff um, and all of you know, yeah, all the administrative stuff, okay? That, that a traditional brokerage does. Because here's what I see. I, I've seen a lot of brokerages out there that for, for good, you know, Keller Williams, EXP, Exit, you know, I'm pretty sure there's other ones. They're constantly trying to think about, hey, you know, you come into this industry to make some money and then we try to have this plan so you can have some residual income or passive income or retirement plan. A lot of it has to do with the fees that people, that other agents pay to join that company or you're getting a piece of the commission that, that the agents are making. I see something different. I don't want the commissions of an agent to go to another agent or, or the, the monthly dues that an agent pay, 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 uh, pays to go to another agent. 
I want the commissions of an agent to go towards income producing real estate. And so fortunately, in the family, Amanda's brother is the director of a real estate fund who wants to expand and go in a similar direction as us. So we want to create a fund, a real estate fund, that we invest in income producing real estate. And the power that we would have as a network if 5% of all your commissions went to a real estate fund, that we then put that money into income producing real estate, and then we paid you out monthly paychecks. No different than you invested into a REIT or some other brand. But the buying power that we would have if we pooled our money together into a real estate fund and invested in income in producing real estate, whether that be multifamily residential home or working spaces, that is left to be decided. But I think that you all together, if we work together, would have amazing buying power in the marketplace to be able to put money towards great projects that make a lot of money, and then you get paid on that proportionate to your contribution. So the more you make, the more you put in the fund, and the more you get paid out residually, and that is true residual income. Because the flaws that I see with getting paid on other realtors' commissions and other realtors' yearly fees is 95% of realtors fail. So if you get into real estate and you plug in and you pump 5, 10 years of production and say you quit real estate, if a percentage of your income went into income-producing real estate, you own that for life. And you will have residuals for life. Where if you build a downline of people who are realtors who statistically will all fail in one year, three years, five years, ten years, or at least quit or retire, that tree you build crumbles. Real estate does not. And that's why I think um, there needs to be a brokerage model where a percentage of your paycheck goes towards real estate and a percentage of your real estate um, or a percentage of our earnings as a company go to some nonprofit. And what I think makes the most sense is that we have a nonprofit that uh, helps the homeless, right? You're in real estate helping people buy homes and sell homes. And if you use us, if you use a park bench agent, you know that a percentage of our proceeds goes towards helping the homeless. Okay, and that's why you should use us versus the competition, right? Millennials, largest buyers in the world right now, and in the next 10 to 20 years will be the largest sellers. And we are the most socially responsible and socially conscious group. And so in 10 to 20 years when we're selling, we're going to want to use a brand that is also giving back to communities. And so I think that we um, have a brokerage that not only builds real estate that helps the world, but we also have a percentage of our fund help the homeless. I think it just makes complete sense, and that will be a great story for our brand, all right, and for you guys to be a part of that. All right, so again, this idea is, is off into the future, okay? Um, and then... The next layer on top of that, I, I, if you'll notice, I'm actually trying to create a new kind of real estate brokerage that doesn't actually take any of the money from the agent because that's what I did in fitness. I created a new kind of fitness franchise that didn't take any of the money from the fitness professional. Granted, they paid money for all the different technology and marketing needs they had, and that's how we made money. And a piece of our profits went towards all the stuff they needed as fitness professionals. Same thing for real estate. I see that it's the exact same thing for real estate. And it's the same thing for mortgage. It's the same thing for contractors. It's the same thing for inspectors and appraisers, insurance, title, escrow, lawyers, accountants. And this is where I see Park Bench becoming a neighborhood brokerage and starting a brand new business model and a category the world has never seen where we become the back office 
for entrepreneurs. We become the technology team, the marketing team, and the operations team for local professionals of all kinds. And again, by us doing this, it makes it easier for us to take a percentage of our profits and put it towards all the expenses that a real estate brokerage has that charges you for. That we, by our size, are able to pay for without charging you. And we eat those costs as a purpose, as a point of our business model. It, every company company eats costs and doesn't pass those costs on to their consumer. And I've been thinking through these models and I really see that this is what the industry needs. It's a total shakeup. Um, and a lot of investors, I was just at a conference last week in Boston, a lot of investors who talk to a lot of companies in real estate and property tech and in the local space love this idea and I have a lot of follow up with some investors and that's where we're going to talk about how this whole all the stuff that I'm talking about today is going to happen um and again I talked about this earlier if you are a part of contributing to this vision where you help us sell neighborhood loyalty cards to consumers. You help us get other sponsors to work with you in your area who are in different industries. You help us turn Park Bench into a marketplace that people can buy products and services on. And that major brands want to advertise on you, as local leaders, will get affiliate commissions on these transactions. You will have a separate business that's not a real estate business that will be connected to Park Bench as you are the local leader of Park Bench. You have a local business, contractor business to Park Bench. We start paying you through the flow of money that happens through our platform. So when people talk about how agents can't get paid on the referrals to mortgage brokers and the referrals to insurance agents, the referrals they give, because that's the law, that's okay. There's a loophole. You are you have a separate business. There's no there's nothing stopping you from having a side business as I'm a real estate agent and I have a local marketing business. I have a local affiliate marketing business and Park Bench is the company I work with for my affiliate marketing business. Park Bench gets paid fees by the mortgage agent, by the insurance agent. They get paid fees by the consumers in the community and we pass that money on to our local leaders, to our affiliates, and they are you. And then it creates a new revenue stream for you that allows you to lower your fees to all the sellers and the buyers so that you can beat your competition to it and you offer the same level of service. I think you'll end up making more money than you make now, but you'll be making it in totally different ways. This is my three to five year plus goal, okay? Um, and vision for the whole industry and in reinventing your profession, reinventing the industry so that you are still providing your service to buyers and sellers and I'm not even complicating your job. You are still, all you're doing all day, every day is getting out in the community, meeting people, adding value, building relationships, and finding people to help buy and sell homes. And because we are your platform and your back end, we can also start building relationships with all those businesses and professionals and consumers that you're doing they're bringing onto the platform and building relationships with, we can start creating flows of money because of this. And then we can start passing that off to you. And I liken this to what Nextdoor is not doing. Lots of realtors are the reason why Nextdoor has grown. Lots of businesses are the reason why Facebook has grown. Facebook and Nextdoor make a lot of money on advertising. Have they given any of that to the people that helped build the platform? No. I think that's ridiculous. And a lot of us millennials 
are out there looking at these corporations that are run the way they're run and saying, you're greedy pigs. You don't need to do that. This is the way for the future. And by doing it this way, the the have for, wow, real estate agents cost a lot of money. Mortgages cost a lot of money. Lawyers cost a lot of money. Blah, 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 cost a lot of money. By helping distribute money to people who create commerce within a local area, deserve it. Period. The end. The people who create local commerce deserve a piece of the local commerce. And that's what these big companies are not doing, and that's what I would love to do down the road. And although it scares me, and it may be scare you, this may involve blockchain and cryptocurrency as a way to actually make this happen seamlessly with low costs. Okay? So um, I as well, if blockchain and cryptocurrency confuse you, it confuses me, but I'm starting to learn enough to learn that all it is is a mechanism to create the outcome that we desire. So when I talk about this vision that I want the leaders who helped build a local platform and help get the businesses using it, help get the homeowners using it, which then make advertisers want to be on it, which makes other sponsors want to be a part of it, which makes people want to buy services and products through the platform. The leaders who made that possible deserve a piece of the money. Uh, and blockchain and cryptocurrency may be the mechanism to actually go make that happen. Um, these are the things that go through my head um, as I think about the three, five, ten year uh, vision of Park Bench. So I hope this doesn't overwhelm you and make you in fear of what the hell did I sign up for, um, as I'm sure that thought may have crossed some of your heads. Like, what the, you know, did I just sign up for? I thought I was just signing up for a company that helped me interview people in my community and 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 create leads and build my database. Um, th that is what we are right now. Um, but the where we're going, um, hopefully you get excited about about us adding more value to you, us being able to uh, save you some time and money in the ways that you currently do business. Us helping you build a bigger business with less stress um, because you have help, you have assistance, you have systems and technology. And with us, if you have a fear that that your industry is due for a massive shakeup and you have a fear of your commissions going down, listen, the reality is it will go down. But are you a part of a company? that's going to protect you and find a solution for you so your income doesn't take a hit. Because that's all that matters, right? Let's forget about the, the strategy and the tactic is I make 6%. The problem is I want to make $100,000 or $250,000 or a million dollars a year, or I want to, right? I want to give value to people. I want to be a leader in my community. That's what hopefully you really think about, you think about your financial goals and you think about your, your legacy goals and what fulfills you as a human being. And that is what we should be laser focused on trying to maintain and actually improve. And then how that all happens um, is, is where things can get interesting and get kind of cool. Um, so that is what we're doing. Now, here are the challenges, okay? We need money, we need talent, and we need more of you. We need more local leaders like you all, okay? So um, first and foremost, if you want to answer that brokerage survey and you have not already, please say so in the chat box. More importantly, to help me raise money because this is what will be required to achieve this, okay? We need lots of money to get all these things done as fast as possible because I'm impatient and I want it done yesterday. And we know how to do it. We just need more money to hire more people to work with the leaders at this company to make it all happen. And I believe what will help me raise money because investors get excited about this vision, but they go, are you sure you're able to do this? 
Do your customers even want you to do this? Do your current clients agree that they want you to build these technologies and these marketing services and become a brokerage and, 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 and the way that you want it to be done? If you want to create a video, I have a series of questions that you could just do a, an iPhone video. It doesn't have to be crazy. You just do an iPhone video answering these questions. You send me the raw video footage. You don't have to worry about editing or whatever. You just do a phone video answering these questions to tell investors um, what you need, what you want, and why you think Parkbench is the company to get you to where you need to be and where the industry needs to be. Um, if you want to do that video, um, I would appreciate it. And thank you so much. Um, thank you, Debbie and John, for, for volunteering. It's the more the merrier because we'll create a montage um, and it will really make an impact on those investors to want to step up and go, hey, let's, let's let Park Bench um, solve this problem with the real estate industry and with community engagement. Okay. The next thing is local leaders, okay? The more leaders we have, the bigger we get as a company, the better, the more resources we have to, to grow, um, the better the network is so that we can grow together, we'll learn together, um, and build more technologies and build that referral network, okay? So again, if you know any friendly community-minded agents, Okay, if you know any agents who are hungry to build their business and who want to be a part of something big and cool and get in early, okay, because you guys are grandfathered in. If you want, if you know, know agents who would be a great addition to our network and to these masterminds, write their names in the chat box or connect them with your account manager, okay, um, the more the better. All right. That's what we need. We need help for the video to make all this stuff a reality, and we need more local leaders. And what I will do now is I will open up the webinar and this mastermind for some questions, for some comments. Um, if I missed anything earlier, because that chat box was just scrolling through, which was awesome, then let's bring it up again. I'll stay on for a little bit longer to answer those questions. But thank you everyone for your time. I appreciate you. I hope you're excited about the future of the company. Um, and, and I hope you can really see that we are thinking about your interests on a really big scale. That this is not just we want to do what we're doing right now. Right now for you, we want to do so much more for you um, and, and hope, hope that excites you that you're you know, a client and a, and a partner with a company like this because you're the only person we work with in your area. So to me, you're a partner. If I only get to work with one person per area and I have a goal of you then being the agent for the brokerage in the area that I don't have a model like other brokerages where I have as many agents as possible. Um, it, it really matters to me that you guys are happy, that you're successful and that you are better than your competition. Okay. If there's any questions or comments or things that I did not get to, um, put the, in the chat box and I would just kind of scroll through, um, the chat right now. Thank you everyone. If you have to run, I know this was a little bit longer, but we have a big future and a big vision. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, John. Thank you, Candice. All right. Thank you, Tim. Sandy, I, told, I agree with you. The commissions will change. You know, the commissions were made back when houses cost $50,000, you know. Um, now, we in the industry know that you guys spend more money than you used to, right? Like, yeah, you make more money, but you spend more money to get the deal done. And homeowners don't get that. Homeowners don't get that if they don't use you, they're selling for less. And the platforms that are trying to cut realtors out are saying, you know, 
yeah, yeah, we'll buy your house for 6% less, but we also don't take 6%. But they aren't telling you that they, they say it's 6% less, but it's not 6% less. Their valuation tools are 10 to 20 to 30% less, and then it's 6% less than that. Like the valuation tools are, the, are what's getting it wrong, but people don't see that. Okay. Hopefully you you, you are all like the the more you work your area, the better it's going to be for you long term. Knowing what we're going to do, hopefully this really does inspire you. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Susan. Okay. The hopefully when you see that this is what my intention is, it gets you excited to build your area up more because you know I'm coming behind you with more value for your community, for your area, for your platform. So whatever work you put in, it's going to pay off. Uh, if you're interested in the video, Randall, uh, I'll, send, uh, I'll send you a link, okay? And what it is is a, is a, a couple of questions that I'll send with you on video that um, you just speak into a, your phone, answer the questions, and it's information that I'm going to be sending to investors to get them to go, wow, you guys have the best agents, you have the right agents, you have the community-minded agents, you guys have the same goals, you have the same interests, you have the same vision. And when I see that happening, it makes them more confident to give us millions and millions of dollars to execute uh, this vision. Corey, will this be recorded with links? Absolutely. You will get a PDF of the of the notes, and I will be summarizing everyone else's feedback, as always. Um, and uh, the, the link for the recording will be sent to you as well. That is a standard of our masterminds. Um, so better late than never. Thanks for coming, Corey. So Randall talks about high schools selling neighborhood cards to individuals that give them discounts. Uh, in Canada, they're called student price cards. So that's exactly where I got the idea. And they sell it to them. So imagine a card that's free. Now, we may sell it to people just for less. Um, and it's a digital card because who likes carrying around that physical card? Um, so. These are some ideas that we have to, to, to take that idea that is great and just do it better. Susan, would you recommend having a promotion on our website to lower our commission on new listings? I would not recommend lower uh, showing people that you're discounting your commission. I would save that for the conversation, excuse me, if you need to. I would not recommend having a promotion on the website to look where you lower the commission for new listings. Um, I would save that for the negotiation because you want to constantly appear that you are of high value. You, you fight like the thing about discounting commissions is you want to show that you really fight for your full commission because that shows that you fight for the full price of the home. If you're going to be selling someone's home, that person wants to know that you fight for every dime. And you make more money the more money they make on the house. So they want you to fight for their house selling price. Just like, and, and this way you sample that tenacity is by fighting for your commission okay
Sandy asked a question about um, Amanda's brother. So we would start, so it would be the Park Bench Real Estate Acquisitions, and um, we will pool everyone's money together. This is the big idea. We'll pull everyone's money together. Um, and then actually, the realtors, you guys will be helping find the deals. And then the person who finds the best deal, and we'll all have kind of, you know, some some voting and some input from the group because you're all smart real estate people. It's genius that we'll all be contributing to figuring out what finding the deals figuring out which deal's the best. There'll be rewards for people who find the deals. Um, and uh, and then, you know, yes, the fund will ultimately decide at the end of the day which one to go with. Um, someone has to have the ultimate decision. But the best way to run companies is by using your, your, your smart soldiers on the ground. You guys are, you guys are the, the leaders. You guys are the the experts in the area and you know real estate um so we'll definitely be tapping into that knowledge totally agree with you corey All right, we we all got work to do, so I hope everyone enjoyed this session. For the ones that are remaining, have yourself a great week. This is the final mastermind until the new year. I'll be reminding everyone via email. Um, so uh, thank you to everyone who is here and who has attended. Have yourself a happy holidays. I will probably be on the Facebook group sending some messages out to the group. Um, this was a great session, and I'm very, I'm excited, and I'm energized and motivated uh, to get back to work for you all, um, and to see that you are all, that we are all sharing similar um, values and goals and interests uh, is really exciting. So, thank you everyone for being such amazing people to work with. Happy holidays, and we will see you in the new year. <laughs>